Ephesians 4, 17 on down, brother. Mo ammo of the brother Paul. What was he saying? Then we're going to get, you know, going to get into the law that was added for transgression, Mo, Mo Galatians. What is he talking about? What's the law that was added for transgression? What is transgression? A sin. So there was a law for sin? To get rid of sin? To atone for sin? Until Christ came and became the ultimate sacrifice. It was something put in place, and that was the order to preach, y'all. That's what that come down to, all right? Ephesians 4. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 17. Yes, sir. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk, uh -huh. in the vanity of their mind. So he telling the, the believing the believers. Now, I remind you when it's saying Gentile, you got brothers that was living amongst these Gentiles that didn't have a clue of who they were, and you had native people from these lands that lived that, that was living there, that was listening as well. You know what I'm saying? So you had devout Jews amongst these Gentiles because it was synagogues everywhere Paul and them already went, proving Israelites was living in these Gentile areas. But outside of the knowledgeable Israelites that was in these Gentile areas, you had unknowledgeable Israelites who was walking around as if they was Greeks, Romans, Ephesians, Galatians, you feel me? And you got Gentiles that are natural Gentiles that's, that's into all that extra madness and reverie. All right, so he telling those that are the believers amongst them, don't walk as the other Gentiles walk. All right, come on, brother. Having the understanding darkened. Mm -hmm. Being alienated from the life of God Ooh. through the ignorance that is in them. <laughs> wow. You alienated from God because of your ignorance? Come on, brother. Because of the blindness of their heart. The blindness of their minds. Come on. Who being past feelings mm -hmm. have given themselves over unto lasciviousness uh -huh. to work all uncleanness. With greediness. Gave, giving themselves over to it. And lasciviousness is extreme wickedness. Extreme wickedness. At that point, you ain't got no shame. Mm -hmm. All right, come on, brother. But ye have not so learned Christ. You see, that Christ ain't got nothing to do with the Gentiles, lasciviousness, and feast days, and revelry. And he ain't got nothing to do with all them pagan days and all that. All right, you ain't learned Christ. All right, come on. If so, be that ye have heard him. And have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus. Come on. That ye put off concerning the former conversations the old man. The what man? The old man. Your past life. What you used to do before right. you got down with Christ. All right. Come on. Which is corrupt uh -huh. according to the deceitful lust. That's right. See that? Corrupt according to deceitful lust. lust your lust can deceive you. You be thinking with the wrong head and then mess around and ran up in something you ain't supposed to be doing. You see that? It says lust is deceitful. Come on, brother. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. See, that's how you're born again, renewed in the spirit of your mind. So the old man, we used to be doing that. Mm -hmm. We was often what the world was doing. Now that we're in Christ, we've been renewed in the spirit of our mind. So we just read under the new covenant what's supposed to be on your mind. The laws of God. It's supposed to be on your mind and in your heart. Especially if you claim you are under the new covenant. Come on now. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. All right? Come on. And that ye put on the new man, uh -huh. which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Come on. Wherefore, putting away lying. Put away lying. Put away lying. Now, we, it tell you in the scripture, is Paul teaching commandments, sir? He must be. It says, put away lying. Thou shalt not bear false witness. But hold on, hold on. Paul done, didn't teach the commandments, right? He, 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 he frees you up to be a pagan, right? Come on, brother. Put away lying. Uh -huh. Speak every man truth. With his neighbor. Come on. For we are members one of another. Uh huh. Be ye angry and sin not. The Bible says you can be mad about some things, but don't use your anger as an excuse to cause you to sin. Or sin is the breaking of God's commandment. 1 John 3 and 4. Romans 5, 13 and 14. Romans 4 and 15. Also. You see that uh, sin is the breaking of God's commandment. So you can be angry about a situation, but don't let your anger be an excuse for you to break a commandment of God. It's no excuse. 
All right, come on, brother. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Uh huh. Neither give place to the devil. See, the Bible says you can't give place to the devil. The nigga can't sit down. He can't have a seat. No, you, you can't chill with us. None of that. You got to go. You can't give place to the devil. All right, come on, brother. Let him that stole steal no more. Uh oh. Paul teaching about stealing? Hmm. <laughs> Thou should not steal. Ain't that a commandment, too? Mm -hmm. Commandment number six, ain't it? So y'all been saying things about this man that cannot be found in the record. We started the, the, the lesson off with he saying he believe everything written in the law and the prophets. Believe everything. Then he said, let him that stole steal no more. So the law of stealing is still in effect. Hmm. Come on. But rather let him labor, working with his hands, the thing which is good, mm -hmm. that he may have to give to him that need it. Right. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, mm. but that which is good to the use of edifying, Oof. that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Uh -huh. Now check this out. It says, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. Like what? Y'all, you hear us talk a little bold or with a little rude speech, and you'll call that corrupt communication. But what's corrupt? Us talking boldly about these scriptures or pastor telling you you don't have to do the commandments anymore. What's the corrupt communication? Mm. I mean, of course, this is not edifying. If I told a little joke on the street, hey man, pull your, pull your damn pants up, man. I ain't trying to see all that. That little brother just got edified. He pulled his pants up and tightened his belt up. But if you run around telling the little brother, oh, you ain't got to keep the commandments no more. He figured I can be a jack artist. I can be a klepto. I can do the five-finger discount all day just believe in Jesus. You see that? Come on, brother. So let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying or teaching. So what's supposed to be coming out of our mouth supposed to be instructing the masses. You're not instructing them, telling them you ain't got to keep the commandments and that the commandments is weak. You men are teaching the doctrine of the devil because that's what the serpent told Eve. Hey, what did the Lord command you? Oh, he told us we can do this, this, that, and the third. You ain't got to listen to him. You ain't going to die. That what you pastors are doing. It's the same spirit. You ain't got to do that, man. That's not your spirit. Same exact spirit. I told that one pastor, this rhetoric sounds familiar. I've read this before. What did I read? This? Oh, I remember where I read this. Genesis chapter 3. That was the serpent said to eat. <laughs> this sounds very familiar. Come on, bro. And group. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, yep. whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Mm -hmm. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor mm -hmm. and evil speaking mm -hmm. be put away from you with all malice. With all what? Malice. With all malice. He say put it all away from you. You see that? Because we supposed to be a new creature in Christ. That's what it's all about, man. You feel me? We supposed to act better. You know, be every day striving to be a better brother in this, a brother, a better husband, a better father. You feel me? Better, better comrade to my brethren. You feel me? That's what it's supposed to be. Every day, man, we're supposed to put away from us, especially as believers, bitterness, wrath, mm -hmm. all that from amongst us. Why? Because we represent the ascended Christ, and He the one coming with the wrath and judgment anyway. Ain't nothing I can do after I, after I get about my feelings and I, uh, I calm down. Ain't nothing I can do. We got to stop all this madness, y'all. Really. Let's go to this Romans. Romans chapter 1. I want to show this other one about. Because it said, and we read one spot where, the, where Paul, he was even saying that the feminine is not getting into the kingdom. Romans 1, 24 to 32. Oh, praise to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And so far, we, we, we got Paul on trial, and we've read nothing at all about paganism or freeing you up to uh, worship an idol or you ain't got to keep the commandments. Paul was simply talking about transition and priesthood and how we up under the law of Christ now. And it would take it, it would take your faith to believe that because an established order was going on for a thousand years in which priests were officiating in the temple of God. So it would take for you to believe that, you know what I'm saying, to straight turn away from that and what you were doing for a thousand years and say, no, nah, we good, we don't got to do that. Because the Son of God just was crucified, resurrected, and ascended. And he said he's coming back to the same spot he left. 
So for a new believer, when this movement was kicking off, he would have to been fully persuaded in that. Why am I going to kill animals, take animals to high priest Caiaphas, who was there putting Christ to death? Why am I going to him to take some blood from some animals when the Messiah blood was just shed? You see that? So now, even though they all was Israelites, you hear me? They call the Nazarenes or followers of Christ Christian, and then their forefathers are called Jews. And you look in this as if there are different factions of people, only in belief. They all were the same people. The Christians you read about in the New Testament or the followers of Christ or who they call the Nazarenes, they were Israelites. The first ones was Israelites who followed the Christ and, and, and said later for the order of Aaron. Pure revolution. Romans 1 and 24, Israel. Let's get it. Verse 24. Yes, sir. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanliness. Through the lust of their own heart. Through the lust of their what? Of their own heart. The lust of your own heart. You was burning in your lust. So God gave you up to that. Come on, brother. To dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Yeah. Who changed the truth of God unto a lie. Who changed the truth of God into a lie? Who did this? Come on, brother. And worship and serve the creature more than the creator. Uh-huh. Who is blessed forever. Amen. A lot of y'all want to know why do we always got problems with pagans? Because pagans worship the gods of nature. They worship creations and not the creator. That's why we got a problem with pagans. Humping trees and calling on spirits of the waters and all type of madness. Come on, bro. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affection. Who gave them up? God uh -huh. gave them up unto vile affection. Right. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. So this is prophesied all 2,000 years ago that our woman would change the, the, the course of nature. They would go against what's nature or natural. What's natural for a woman to be with a man? What's not natural? Women on women. See this? Let, and then we see that going on in our communities a lot now. Women think they're men and then they got a beautiful woman with them. You see that? Lesbianism right here in the Bible. Condemned by the Most High. Because that's not the natural order of God. Come on, brother. Verse 27. Yeah. And likewise also the men, mm. leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one towards another. You see that? Men were burning their lust one toward another. That's happening today as well. Let you know this Bible is a book of prophecy. Men are more attracted to men now than women. That's unnatural. Come on, brother. Men with men. Men with who? Men with men. Come on. Working that which is unseemly mm. and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was me? Which was me, or which that which was old to them? So you read paid back, and you look at all these diseases be happening, people dropping dead out of nowhere. Why? Because men have given themselves over into a lustful mind, and being that you ain't want to retain God in your knowledge, He gave you up to that, because you was burning your lust for that so much, and not the laws of God. This carnal mind was riding you so bad. We read it earlier. Carnal mind is enmity against God. God gave you up. That's what you won't have. It. All right, come on, brother. And even as did, and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, uh -huh. God gave them over to a reprobate mind. That means a defiled mind. You ain't want to retain God in your knowledge, because God is a God of knowledge, not buffoonery. He gave you over to a defiled mind. Come on, brother. Yeah. Hosea, my people are destroyed. For the Hosea of God. four and six. Yeah, come on, brother. I'm gonna read that again. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient, uh -huh. being filled with all unrighteousness, fornications, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, mm -hmm. murder. Debate, deceit, malignity, 
whispers. Didn't we just read about all that in Galatians mm -hmm. five? Uh, these are the works of the manifest, I mean, works of the flesh which are manifest, and read through all that. And he said, these ain't getting into the kingdom. All these are lawbreakers, brothers and sisters. So how does the preacher tell you you don't have to keep the law of God? Is he explaining that you're not under the law to the priest anymore, but under the law of Christ? Christ bought that with his blood. Christ bought you with his blood. You are bought without a price. Or bought with a price. Mm. You see that? Your body is not your own because you already been bought. You're a debtor. Yeah, you're a debtor. You, you owe you owe the, the Most High in the name of His Son to walk after the Spirit. Christ put His life on it. Come on, brother. Backbiters, mm -hmm. haters of God, mm -hmm. despiteful, proud, mm -hmm. boasters, mm -hmm. inventors of evil things, mm -hmm. disobedient to parents, come on, without understanding, covenant breakers. What kind of what breakers? Covenant breakers. Covenant breakers. We see that going on now. No, nobody dying. Ain't nobody down the covenant of the Most High no more. Everybody do what they want to do. The mailman just trying to justify uh, what he was doing until we, you know, open up these scriptures and he didn't have an answer. Come on, brother. Without natural affection, right? Implacable, mm -hmm. unmerciful. Come on. Who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things. Are worthy of death. Are worthy of what? Are worthy of death. They that commit such things are worthy of death. Come on. Not only do the same, uh -huh. but have pleasure in them that do them. So not even those that do it, but you, you got pleasure in them that do it. Like, like, well, I got friends that are like that. I mean, I don't do it, but I got friends that are like that. Yeah, mm -hmm. we cool. We hang out. It's not only those that are doing it, those that got pleasure in them that doing it. Who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death. Woo! It's Bible series. And you can see that uh, it's an agenda being pushed here, man, because who's doing the selective scripture reading? Like, how is it that so-called Christians that go to church on Sunday all over the world, all of them are up under this Pauline doctrine, and that doctrine cannot be found in the Bible? Not with the true intelligence of the Bible. That doctrine got too many holes in it to where when you come asking questions, they they are that you, you so-called Christians always back down from a, a a debate or somebody that's trying to get some understanding with this Bible. Y'all always back down, even your pastors. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, young brother, well, I gotta go. Checking your watch, you ain't even got one on. Oh yeah, you know it's about that time. I gotta go. What you mean you gotta go? We ain't promised them all. Let's get this understanding. Never that, though, huh? All right, Romans 3 is where we'll we going next. Romans 3. Yeah, yeah, we, that's where we're going to jump back. Uh, matter of fact, let's go there first. Let's go there. No, 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 Galatians 3. Then we're going to go to the law of Aaron and come back up to this Romans. But we're going to have to show it. Let's go to Galatians 3, 19 to 22. And this is another spot they'll try to go and say, well, we ain't got to keep the law. Look right here. Then we're going to get on some of these dietary scriptures they think they've got because they say, Paul says you can eat whatever you want. Mm. No, nah, that ain't what Paul said. We have yet to read that. All right, Galatians 3, 19. Galatians 3, 19 through 25. The law that was added for transgression. Then we are going to show you the law that was added for transgression. You see that? Sin offerings for the priests. That the priests had to do not only for themselves, but also for the people. All right, you there, brother? Galatians 3. Galatians 3. Mm -hmm. Verse 19. Verse 19. Yes, sir. Wherefore then serveth the law? Question. What law is he talking about, right? So what then served the law? He finna tell you which one. Come on. It was added because of transgression. So what law was added for sin? What law did you have to keep or do in the old covenant just in case you went off and broke a law? There was something in place that you had to do. It was added for transgression. All right? Come on. Till the seed... Should come uh -huh. to whom the promise was made. Until the seed, until Christ should come to whom the promise was made. 
So the law that you was up under or the law that was added for transgression was only in force until Christ showed up. All right, come on. And it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. So let's go read about the law that was added for transgression. Let's go back to Leviticus. Read a little bit of Leviticus 16. We're going to read a little bit of Leviticus 17. Exodus 30. And show you the law that was added for transgression. Go to Leviticus 16 first. Then we get 17 and 11. Leviticus 16 and 1. Show y'all something. Isaiah 28 verse 9 through 13 is the instruction on how to read the Bible and teach it. Lion must be upon lion. Precept must be upon precept. Her a little and there a little. That's why we jump around to piece the Bible together like a puzzle so you can know what's being said here. If you're trying to read the Bible like a regular book, you're not going to get it. So that's not the instruction within the Bible on how you study it. It has to be line upon line, precept upon precept. Her a little and there a little. That way understanding can be had. All right. This is Leviticus 16. Start at verse 1, brother. 1 through 14. Verse 1. Yeah. And the Lord spake unto Moses. After the death of the two sons of Aaron, when they offered before the Lord and died. Hmm. Hmm. Ooh, so they died, huh? Mm -hmm. Right after they offered. Yeah. And the Lord said unto Moses, Speak unto Aaron thy brother, that he come not at all times into the holy place, within the veil before the mercy seat, which is upon the ark, that he die not. While we appear in the cloud upon the mercy seat. Okay, so we had a temple set up or a tabernacle, right? And then there was a veil that separated the main sanctuary from what's called the Holy of Holies. And that's where the uh, Ark of the Covenant was at, which is a representation of the throne of God in heaven. And that's where the Most High would, uh, on the Day of Atonement, would commune with the High Priest of Israel in the cloud over the Ark of the Covenant in the tabernacle. In the temple. So the priest was truly the mediator between the nation of Israel and the Most High until Christ showed up. That's why when Christ died and gave a ghost up, that very veil that he's talking about in this Leviticus, it ripped. Ending this order that we're talking about right here. All right? Come on, brother. Thus shall Aaron come into the holy place with a young bullock uh -huh. for a sin offering. For what offering? For a sin offering. Then we read earlier where he says bulls and uh, bullocks. For sin thou hadst no pleasure, but a body thou hast prepared me. See, Aaron and them only was supposed to do this law right here that was added for sin or for transgression until Christ showed up. The law that was added for transgression. Come on, brother. And a ram for a burnt off. Come on. He shall put on the holy linen coat. And he shall have the linen breeches upon his flesh. <laughs> and he shall be girded with a linen girdle. And with the linen... What was that? Mitre. Mitre. Mm -hmm. And with the linen mitre shall he be attired. These are holy garments. Therefore shall he wash his flesh in water. And so put them on. Even the priests had to go to some go to the water before they entered into the temple of the Mosai. That This is a foreshadowing of water baptism. Because the priests always had to wash up before they went before the Most High. Come on, brother. And he shall take of the congregation of the children of Israel uh -huh. two kids of the goats for a sin offering. Right. And one ram for a burnt offering. Right. And Aaron shall offer his bullock of the sin offering, which is for himself, uh -huh. and make an atonement for himself and for his house. You see that? See, they killing animals. We read earlier, it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats should take away sin. You see that? But that's what Aaron and them were doing until Christ showed up to become the ultimate sacrifice. And we keep repeating that so that drills in your head. This is the law that Paul is talking about that ye are not under. That you don't have to do anymore because of the blood of Christ. That's what he's talking about. And being that you are under the blood of Christ... The spirit of Christ, you now have a mind to where you can fight against the law of sin that wars in every man's mind. That war between doing what's right and doing what's wrong. Being that Christ died, shed his blood, he gave power to his disciples and followers to overcome that law of sin 
that's 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 heavily heavily prevalent within our people. You got that power or not? All right, come on, brother. The blood of bulls and goats can never give you that power. All right, come on, brother. Verse 8. And Aaron shall cast lots seven. upon you. Ain't seven. Seven. Yeah, verse 7. Mm -hmm. And he shall take the two goats and present them before the Lord at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. Uh -huh. And Aaron shall cast lots upon the two goats. One lot for the Lord and the other lot for the scapegoat. Come on. And Aaron shall bring the goat upon which the Lord's lot fell. And offer him for a sin offering. Offer him for a sin offering. This was the law that was added for what? Transgression. Transgression meaning what? Sin. So if you sin, there was something you had to do to get back in good graces with the Most High. This was one of them. You had to offer a bullock. You had to go to Aaron and his sons and kill some animals. And offer that blood on the altar of the Most High. Mm -hmm. That's what you had to do. And you had to do that until the seed should come to whom the promise was made. Making sense. Mm -hmm. All right, come on. But the goat on the which the lot fell to be the scapegoat shall be presented alive before the Lord to make an atonement with him and to let him go for a scapegoat into the wilderness. Uh -huh. And I shall bring the bullock of the sin offering which is for himself, uh -huh. and shall make an atonement for himself and for his house, and shall kill the bullock of the sin offering, which is for himself. So you're supposed to kill that bullock. It's the sin offering, which is for yourself. The law that was added for transgression. This cannot, uh, this cannot disannul the promise. All right, come on, brother. And he said, one, one more thing. Notice Abraham didn't have to do none of this either. You notice that. There was, the priesthood wasn't set up. Abraham and came and bowed to Melchizedek and gave him a tenth of the increase of the spoils of war. You see that? So Abraham didn't have a priest to go to. Why? Because he had the true circumcision. He was fully persuaded in his mind that the Most High was creator of all. And he had that belief before he ever even got physically circumcised. Mm -hmm. That's the order. The, the faith comes, then the work. Then you're justified, then you work. Faith, justification, then you work. That's the order now. Same order Abraham was up under. That's the order we are up under. The order Michael's a dick. All right, come on, brother. And he shall take a censer full of burning coals of fire mm -hmm. from off the altar before the Lord, mm -hmm. and his hands full of sweet incense, beaten small, and bring, and bring it within the veil. Come on. And he shall put the incense upon the fire, the fire before the Lord, that the cloud of the incense may cover the mercy seat that is upon the testimony, uh, that he died not. Verse 14. And he shall take of the blood of the bullock and sprinkle it with his finger upon the mercy seat See that? eastward. Come on. And before the mercy seat. Shall he sprinkle of the blood with his finger seven times? See, this is the, the bullock that's being offered. He already been killed. They got his blood. And this is what the priest had to do. They had to sprinkle the blood on the altar so many times eastward. Had to sprinkle the blood on the mercy seat. This is what the Most High had them doing until Christ showed up. All right? Come on, brother. Then shall he kill the goat of the sin offering that is for the people. And bring his blood within the veil. And do with that blood as he did with the blood of the bullock. <laughs> and sprinkle it upon the mercy seat. Mm -hmm. And before the mercy seat. Verse 16. And he shall make an atonement for the holy place. Because of the uncleanness of the children of Israel. Because of their transgressions. Mm -hmm. And all their sins. And so shall he do for the tabernacle of the congregation. They remained among them in the midst of their uncleanness. Jump over to uh, chapter 17. 